In this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of ways that you can run into a React max depth exceeded error, which is an infinite loop, and how to fix them. Welcome to Rock Codes. This is Rasheed. I want to help you code something awesome. And today we're going to talk about infinite loops in React. So uh, let's switch over to the code here. What I've got here is just your basic function component. Right now, this does absolutely nothing. It just has a foo variable, counting that foo and displaying it. Now, one common way you can get into an infinite loop scenario is with use effect, you forget uh, to put a dependency array on it. That means it will run every single render, meaning this is updating foo every render, and then that render causes it to, again, update foo, which you get the picture. So one way to stop that is let's go ahead and add a empty dependency array. See if the stop counts or the count stops. Um, this does fix the issue. However, as you can see, we now have an error that the use effect is missing a dependency. And this linting error actually is how a lot of people get caught um, in another issue where you say, okay, cool, I need to fix my linting. So you put the foo in there and oh, infinite loop. Wow, maximum depth exceeded. So what do I do now? Well, the real fix here is that you use a function update for your state setter. So let's say prev foo, make this a functional update. This becomes prev foo. So now I don't need the actual state variable in the dependencies array because technically I'm not actually using it. I'm just relying on a function update to provide me whatever that current value is when this use effect runs. Um, and this is pretty much how you should always set state when your current state depends on the previous state. It's actually in the docs. Um, and that's actually the same for uh, function components or if you're still using class components, which is fine. Um, you wanna always use a functional update. So what's another way that we can run into some issues here? So one common way um, that you often see this happen is, let's say we have a handler here. And in this handler, we're gonna set foo to a number, right? It's mad because we're not actually using it. So let's throw a button in here. Boom. <laughs> got confused because this is not a class. This is a function. So what happened? Too many re-renders, huh? Why did we get too many re-renders here? Uh, the common issue is we have a handler and instead of actually passing a reference to that handler, we actually run it in our render function. So here we're doing handle click with the parentheses, which indicate we want to run this function. So this runs every render. So we need to take those parentheses off. Now we're passing a reference to the handler. So when we click here, foo is now set to 25. Now, a lot of you might be watching this and you might be like, I'm not dumb enough to call my handler with parentheses on it. However, let's see what other trouble we can get into here. Uh, one thing that can also happen here, let's just create another component. We once again make that same mistake here. Once again, we hit this max maximum depth exceeded. So how else can we mess this up? One super uh, common thing I have seen as well, it's a little more common with function components because it's a little unclear where the render is. And the answer is it's the whole thing. So a lot of people will start using function components. And so they might just be like, oh, I'm just going to set state right here. That should be fine. That's cool. No, no, that's not fine. It's not okay. You cannot set a state in render and in a function component, render is the whole thing. So you have to wrap your state updaters in a use effect like we've done here. How else can we mess this up? Along with this, this use effect uh, issue that we had earlier, let's say, um, well, I'm gonna have a function that I call, let's say it's some function that maybe is fetching data, that's usually the case you see with a use effect, um, but obviously we're not gonna fetch anything in this example, but the same rules will apply. So let's say here in this handler, 
I'm going to update my state and I'm going to call that inside of use effect. So let's say you have this fetch, fetch stuff here. All it's doing is updating state uh, based on previous state or something like that. Um, so we have our use effect. It calls fetch stuff. And once again, same issue. We're missing this dependency for fetch stuff, right? So we put that thing in there. Oh, now we messed up. So what is the proper way to fix this? Let's first stop the infinite looping here. What do we do to fix this? Well, React is going to actually tell us how to fix this, which is to move this function declaration into the use effect. However, now it wants us to put <laughs> the, the foo dependency, uh, which again is going to cause the problem. So again, functional updates to the rescue. So you might be saying, Ra, how come all of this is happening in a function component? What about classes? Fine, let's look at a class. It's no class hate, guys, but uh, hooks are the new wave. Get on board. Just kidding, classes are fine. <laughs> I just don't use them for new stuff. But um, So let's see, we have this basic class component. Um, this also has a foo state. It has a component did mount, which updates foo. And then it also has a component did update with an erroneous console log. So component did update is one of those methods that um, it's, it's very similar to me to, to use effect in function components. So what will happen here is the component is gonna mount, we're gonna update state. And then whenever our component state updates, we need to update our state again. Usually that's, you know, a different state. I don't know, let's call it bar is We refresh, boom, why? Why do we get immediately get the infinite uh, loop error or the maximum depth exceeded? Well, because we're doing component did update and you should never set state in component did update without a conditional. So one way uh, that you can think about this is it's, it's just like use effect. Use effect gets around this by having a dependency array. So it only updates or it only runs again when something in that array changes. Component did update is similar. However, there is no dependency array. So you don't have React to stop you from doing something silly. You have to say if something, then update the state. We got the wrong condition here, so let's fix that. So what's happening is I didn't update the foo state, so let's add that in, right? We'll just say foo is foo plus one. Oh, this class stuff, man, I tell you what. Let's format that. So if we refresh, we're probably not even going to see. But that's the gist of it is you have to use a conditional and component did update. And even in class components, you can run into some of the same issues um, that we saw in the function component which includes passing a handle click and putting the parentheses on there. Forgive me for my trespasses with these class components here, okay? I have not used a class component in I don't know how long, but I don't wanna leave anybody out because they're still important. One common thing also you see here, you need something calculated for your render, so you wanna calculate it here which is fine actually to calculate things in render. So you might be like, ah. Divided. So we're calculating something in render that's fine, but what you don't want to be doing is this dot set state, right? This looks like something someone might do, right? Because clearly you gotta put everything in state. 
So, and then, you know, you want to use that thing you just made because you updated it here, but nope, can't do it. Cannot call set state or update state inside of render. You're just going to cause an infinite loop. Well, guys, that's all for today. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. If you have any comments or ways that you found that you ran into this issue and how you fixed them, please leave them in the comments. Peace.